Thank you, Madam Chair. And thanks to the panel for being here. These are difficult times and difficult subjects, but they need to be addressed because leadership matters, and you are leaders uh, in academia, at your institutions as well, and leadership matters. Um, uh, President Gay, I was taken by um, some words in your, your opening statement where you said, the cure for anti-Semitism is knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, I, would, I would go where angels fear to tread and, and suggest that it might be better, going back to the original motto idea for Harvard, which was veritas, mm -hmm. truth, mm -hmm. that the cure for anti-Semitism is not simply knowledge. It's truth. Knowledge puffs up. Knowledge sometimes is based upon falsehoods. I think that's what we're facing right now uh, in, in the climate on campuses, is that we're missing the fact of truth um, and allowing, under the guise of free speech, uh, knowledge that isn't true to be exhibited in actions as well. So President Gay, in, in the weeks since October 7th, and again in your testimony, you have said that Harvard's commitment to free speech extends to views that are objectionable or are outrageous. Are you aware that Harvard is ranked dead last on the 2024 Foundation of Individual Rights and Expression Scorecard of Universities on Freedom of Speech? Thank you, Congressman, for the, the question. Um, respectfully, I disagree with that perspective as represented in the report that you cited. I don't think it's an accurate representation of how Harvard treats speech on campus. We are committed to free expression um, and to making space for a wide range of views and perspectives on our campus. With all due respect, this is, let, this let is, me move on a bit. This is bedrock. I would, I would expect that you wouldn't agree with that. I understand that. And I would expect that the University of Penn, the same would be true, that you wouldn't agree that you're second to last on that same scorecard. But uh, President Gay, did you know that 70% of Harvard students say that shouting down a speaker is acceptable? That is not okay. I appreciate that. It seems that perhaps Harvard's commitment to free speech is pretty selective. As you are no doubt aware, prominent alumnus Bill Ackman tweeted you a letter on Sunday, and in that letter, and I have that tweet, I guess that's the beauty of social media, you can get those things. In that letter, he highlighted two cases of Harvard faculty members who were canceled because of views deemed too controversial for your campus. Tyler J. Vanderweel was deemed guilty for those crimes related to his views on marriage and abortion. And then Carol, uh, Carol Hoven, an evolutionary biologist was forced to resign because she stated that a person's sex is biological and binary. Mr. Ackerman's letter also included quotes from a number of faculty highlighting the culture of fear that pervades Harvard's campus for those with views out of step with campus orthodoxy. And so, President Gay, in what world is a call for violence against Jews protected speech but a belief that sex is biological and binary isn't. Thank you for your question. So from the moment that our students arrive on campus, whether it is to begin their Harvard journey as an undergraduate or at one of the professional schools, the message to them is clear, that we are an inclusive community, but one deeply committed to free expression. And that means that we have expectations that that right is exercised mindfully and with empathy towards others. We reinforce that during their time at Harvard by helping them build the skills that allow them to engage in constructive dialogue, even on the most complex and divisive issues. Because what we seek is not simply free expression, but the reason dialogue that leads to truth and discovery, and that does the work of moving us all forward. We but, don't always but, get it but, right, and our students don't always get it right. And when they transgress, they're come held under accountable. That as well, don't they? Your professors come under that as well, don't they? Absolutely. And so for Professor Vanderweel and Hoven, that didn't work for them. 
the free expression of views, at the very least, views, whether fact or truth, I guess we'll leave that to understanding. But nonetheless, they were removed from their positions. And I think that sends a message, a message in this case with Jewish students, that they're of less importance. I yield back.